Hello, welcome to Regime Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 105 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about adding and using user controls on a web form, adding properties to the user control. In part 104 of this video series, we have discussed about creating user controls. If you haven't watched that, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. In fact, if you remember, in the previous session, we have created this calendar user control. Now, let's say I want to use this user control on this web form 2.aspx. Now, let's say we want to capture the date of birth of a person, so I'm going to have the static text date of birth. And now, using a user control on a web form is simple and straightforward. All we have to do is simply drag the user control from the Solution Explorer and drop it on the web page. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So, I am in the source mode of this web form, and then I'm going to drag and drop this user control onto this web form. Now look at this. It has actually added a link to the user control. Now this is not what we have expected. Okay, so let me get rid of this hyperlink from there. Let me flip the web form to the design mode and then let me drag and drop this user control. Alright, now it's working as expected. So when you drag and drop the user control from the Solution Explorer onto the web form, then make sure you are on the design mode. Otherwise, it may not work as expected. All right. So when we added this user control to the web form, what actually happened behind the scenes? Two things. First, it has added this register directive. Second, it has added this control declaration on the web form for the user control. Before we examine the register directive and the control de declaration, let me go ahead and add the standard ASP.NET button control to this web form from the toolbox. So we just added the button control and if you examine the declaration for the button control, pay attention to these two things. You know, ASP, this is called as the tag prefix and button is the tag name. Okay, since a button is a standard ASP.NET server control, the tag prefix is ASP. Okay, just like how the standard ASP.NET controls have a tag prefix and a tag name, user controls also have a tag prefix and tag name in their declaration. So where are these tag prefix and tag name coming from? These are actually coming from the register directive. And what is this register directive? Basically, this register directive registers this user control, the calendar user control, with this web form. Okay, and this register directive is having three important attributes here. Okay, source specifies the source for the user control. Since the user control is present in the root directory of this web application project, you know, we just have the name of the control there. And then the tag name, the tag name is calendar user control, and that's what we have specified here. And the tag prefix is UC1. And that's what we are specifying here. Now, if this tag prefix doesn't make sense to you, if you want to change it to your choice, you can do so. For example, let me change this to Prajim. So if I change the tag prefix in the register directive, then in the control declaration, I have to change it accordingly. Okay, so with this change, let me go ahead and run the application by pressing Control F5. Now, we should be able to use that user control, the calendar user control on this web form. So I can click on the calendar user control, select a date that gets populated and is working as expected. All right. Now, let's say if I want to use this calendar user control on multiple web forms, then on each and every web form where I want to use this calendar user control, do I have to have this register directive? Yes, you have to. But if we register this user control in web.config file of the project, then we don't have to have this register directive on each and every web form. Let's see how to register a user control within web.config file of that project. To do that, we use the pages and controls element within system.web. Let's do that quickly. So I'm going to get rid of this register directive from there. And then within web.config file, I'm going to add pages. And then within pages, we're going to add controls and then the add element. Okay, and we need to specify three attributes here source, tag name, and tag prefix. So, source, okay, so where is this calendar user control present? It's present within the root directory of this web application project. So, I'm going to specify the root directory using the tilde symbol for slash calendar user control dot ACX. And similarly, we need to specify the tag name that's going to be calendar user control and tag prefix. That's going to be. Prajim. 
okay so we have done the declaration within web.config file now let's go to webform2.aspx okay so since now I have the control declaration within web.config file I think this should be fine at this point of time so let me save that and let me run this now by pressing control F5 now we will get an error okay we'll get a runtime error look at this when I build it this I didn't get a build error but I get a runtime error and look at the error message here the page webform 2aspx cannot use the user control calendar user control .ascx because it is registered in web.config file and lives in the same directory as the page so the user control and the page where we are using this one that's on webform 2 so both of these are actually present in the same directory and it cannot happen when this user control is being registered in web.config file okay don't worry that's not a code problem it's by design this is due to an internal design consideration for performance reasons okay and how do we solve this problem to solve this problem uh, simply move this calendar user control to a different folder in real time projects what we actually do is user controls will reside in their own folders for example we'll give them a meaningful name like user controls so that's what I'm going to do right now so to this project I'm going to add a new folder I'm gonna call that user controls so all my user controls are gonna stay within this folder so I'm gonna move this user control into that folder so this user this calendar user control now is in user controls folder so this web form is in a different folder and this user control is in a different folder but then we need to update that within web.config file so the path has changed so I'm gonna say uh, the calendar user control is actually within user controls folder okay so with that change let me build the solution and let's run this web form too now we should not get that error anymore okay so we should be able to you know click on the image select a date and everything works fine okay now if you remember in the previous session you know we didn't use the user control instead we use that image button calendar and button control everything on this webform 1.aspx and when I run this webform 1.aspx and when I select a date from the calendar control look at this when I select a date and then when I click this button control we retrieve that and print it on the webform but how are we doing that since I have this text box image button and calendar everything within the web form it's very easy for me to retrieve the selected date from the text box using the text property of the text box control but now when I'm using the calendar user control look at this this calendar user control has actually encapsulated the text box image button and calendar uh, control all of these inside that user control and that user control is now actually used on this web form 2.aspx okay now look at this on the design I have this problem that's because this calendar user control is not properly cased so that works fine there alright so so all that text box button control and uh, um, you know the image button they are encapsulated within this calendar user control and that calendar user control is used on this web form now when I you know I have a button control here as well so when I click that button I want to retrieve you know the selected date from this control so this entire thing now is one control so how, how do I get the date from that control there is no way for me at the moment okay so to do that we have to actually expose that date as a property from the control so I'm gonna go to this calendar control there and I'm gonna expose a property now where is this date the selected date present the selected date is going to be present in this text date text box so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna provide a public property here okay just like how web forms can have properties and methods you know a control a, a user control also can have properties and methods so I'm gonna specify a property I'm gonna call this selected date property and the type is going to be string I'm gonna make this a get and set property so the get property will return the date from the text box so txt date dot text okay and then if somebody wants to set the value I know set the date they can use the set property so I'm gonna say txt date dot text is equal to value whatever value they set you know we are using that value 
to assign the text property of this text box control. That's the only change that I have to do. So let me go ahead and build this. So build succeeded. Now let's go to the web form 2.aspx where we have used this calendar control. Now what I basically can do is, so if I say, if you look at the ID of that calendar control on web form 2, what's the ID? It is calendar user control 1. So I'm going to copy that. We don't have to have this. So calendar user control one dot, look at that. There should be a property called selected date. And look at the return type of that. It's a string property. So I simply can say response dot write whatever date we have selected. OK, so with that, if we go ahead and run now, we should be able to select the date. And then once I click on the button, that property is going to return the selected date from that calendar user control. So I get that date as expected. Now, we are we are retrieving that dynamically. But then, look at this. When I go to web form 2.aspx, I flip this to design mode. And then I right click on that, go to the properties window. And look at this. I can also have the selected date property here. For some reason, it's not refreshed here. But let me go to the source mode here. And then type selected date. OK, for some reason, it's not updated. Let me clean the solution and rebuild this. So I'm going to clean solution. I'm going to rebuild the solution again. OK, let's flip to the design mode. Let's right click, go to the properties. We should see selected date there. Look at this. For some reason, it's not showing up. But we're able to use that here. Selected date is the property. So let me copy that. This could be an issue with Visual Studio itself. And let me set selected date is equal to maybe 01 4 slash 01 4 slash 2013. And let me run this now. When we load the web form, that date should actually be selected within that calendar user control. So I'm just waiting for that. Look at that. It's selected. For some reason, it's not showing up. Let me close Visual Studio and reopen that once again. So I'm going to right click on that, run as administrator. Because many a times, if Visual Studio is behaving you know, in, in an uh, unexpected way, just close it and reopen it. It should solve most of the problems. OK, so let me now actually flip to the design mode and then go to the properties window, look at that, it shows the selected date right now there. OK, so that's that was an issue with Visual Studio, why it wasn't showing the first time. But then there is another issue here with user controls. Look at this. We have set the text, I mean, the selected date property in the HTML source or using the designer, you know, the properties window here. But then is it setting the date within the text box control? No, it's not. Again, that's a limitation because if you look at this, if I have you know text, for example, the button control, if I change the text there to click, immediately the button control changes its text. Okay. Similarly, I'm setting the property of selected date to this one, 112013. But is that shown in the text box there? It's not. Okay. Again, that's a design, that's by design. And there are two ways to solve that issue. OK, we can create a custom control instead of user control if you want that behavior. Or we can compile the user control into a DLL. Now, when I compile this project, user control is this user control, calendar user control, is not compiled it into its own DLL. Instead, it will be compiled into the project's assembly. OK, but if we compile this user control into its own DLL, OK, then we, we should be able to have this value, you know, whatever you change in the property you know, in the HTML or using the properties window should be reflected there in the control. We'll see how to do that in a later video session. OK, in the next video session, we'll actually discuss about adding events to our calendar user control. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.